pink poodle crafts. Join the poodle pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink poodle crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hello. How's everybody doing today? So I'm coming on to make a little video because um, I wanted to show you some easy things. In our group, we're having a challenge up until the 14th, which is Valentine's Day, and it's called the Valen Poodles Challenge, and we do this every year, and what we do is we, it's a challenge where we ask you to make something pretty, like a tag or ATC or a card or something, you know, and instead of Valentine's Day being romantic, we're making about friends. And in the Poodle Pack group, we're all friends. And it's, you know, we're sisters, we're friends. And I want to be able to make Valentine's Day about sharing your friendship, sharing with your friends in the Poodle Pack, sharing, you know, something handmade just to say hi, uh, say hi, you're my friend, or you know what I mean? Like, instead of like a romantic -y type of thing, make it about friendship instead. So because, you know, people sometimes don't know what they should do or, you know, they, they, you know, don't know that, you know, what they, if they make a card, what kind of card, they don't know. Sometimes you don't know. Um, so I have made these, um, cards and they're watercolored and basically I'm not going to show you these specific types, this specific card with all these bunches of flowers, but these were basically just practice pieces. Actually, I did this one first and I was just practicing different little watercolor flowers and they're not like real flowers necessarily. Um, they're just my like made up versions of flowers and I was practicing them on one piece and I ended up just filling it in with a bunch of different flowers that was supposed to be a practice sheet and I was going to like not do anything with it. Well, it ended up being kind of cute. So I added some grass to the bottom of it. And I just packed it in with a bunch of different flowers. And then I took a blue, a really, really light blue, which is almost hard to see. And once it was completely dry, I had tape around it because I had taped it down. Once it was completely dry, um, I went back with a really, really light wash of blue. And I kind of like went in between. And it didn't bother the other flowers and stuff because I just did it very light blue. And nothing got affected, thankfully. Um... And so that's that one. I did this one last night in the Patreon live stream. Um, I was working on this one, which is a little bit less dark. Um, I used a little bit lighter colors, I think. But I did the same thing. And um, yeah, I mean, I just zoned out and was having a good old time. And it, for me, watercoloring can be very relaxing. And if you were in that live stream last night, um, you know that I barely didn't speak very much. Everybody was kind of chalk talking in the chat and I was just kind of zoning out doing it. And that's what watercoloring does to me. It kind of zones me out. <laughs> so, um, but I want to show you how to do, um, a card that's simple. So you don't have to do something so clustered. I just did this cause they were just like more or less practice sheets. And I kind of just made them into cards and made them into something. Um, I love watercoloring. I'm not very good at it. Um, if you're looking at this and thinking, oh, well, that's really nice though, and you're not looking close enough, but also it's just, I just screwed around and I just lucked out that things worked out. And that's kind of like, watercoloring is kind of like that, where to me, watercoloring is better than acrylic painting because I have, I feel like I have more control over the watercolor in the fact that it's not controllable, if that makes sense, because things can kind of look messy and chaotic and it, it winds up looking kind of cool looking. I don't know why, but you can't really do that with acrylic paints. I don't feel you don't have that same effect because unless you're doing something abstract, I like abstract acrylic painting. That's cool. I, I, I can get on board with that, but like you can do things that are like abstract flowers with watercolor that I feel like you can't get away with, with acrylics. Some people can obviously, but I feel like that also takes skill. Whereas this really doesn't. So anyway, I'm going to show you a basic flower that you can make a very simple card with that doesn't take that long and it's easy to do. And we're going to do this type of flower here and we're just going to do that on the canvas and pretty much that's it. And it'll be a very nice and subtle 
card that you can um, use for any occasion, really. So if you have a piece of chipboard or cardboard, like something thick that can't really be bent, that's a good thing uh, to have because this is just like the back of a, uh, like a pad, like a watercolor pad maybe. You know how like the back piece is usually a piece of like thick cardboard? Or if you have like a piece of glass, but you don't want something real heavy. Like I could tape it down here, but I have a tendency to like to move my work around as I do it. And you'll see that that ends up being very helpful to be able to pick it up and move it around. So if you can find something small enough that you can still have and yet move around on your table as you work, you'll, you'll have probably better luck with that. So a piece of cardboard or something, you know, that's because watercolor paper, when it starts to get wet, it could kind of bow a little bit while it's wet. So this way, if you tape it down, that won't happen and it'll stay nice and flat. So I have some tape left over from the one I did last night and I just kept it. Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but I just kind of eyeball like a quarter, like maybe a quarter of an inch around the perimeter. And that's where I stick the tape. Um, there's no uh, real science behind it. Just kind of eyeball it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. But that's basically all I do is I just kind of eyeball what seems like a quarter of an inch around. And then we can start making our flowers. And, you know, if you've not, you know, if you're not somebody who's ever really watercolored before, um, there are some things that you might want to kind of learn first about different applications of using water on your paper and how watercolor kind of reacts to certain things, how you can kind of almost erase things. There's things you can learn. I'm going to put a link in, it, in the description to um, a person who does watercolor painting on YouTube that helped me and I watched her do like flowers and stuff. Like she showed how to do like some simple flowers and that's where I got a lot of my like flower ideas from was her and she also has good tips and stuff like that and so it might be helpful to watch her channel her name is Shada I forget the last name but her, her channel name is like Shada something and I can't remember but I'll put the link in the description so you can check her out because she's very very good at what she does and you know she just is very helpful um I usually I'm using Arteza uh Arteza 36 watercolors um, they sent me this for to try out. Um, I'll put their link in the description as well on where you can get this from. Um, it's a very nice watercolor palette. It's a great palette for starting out um, because it's nice. It's got 36 colors. It's got everything you need to do anything really. And it's got two trays for mixing, which I really like, which I'm actually going to do a lot of mixing on this side. And I just, I really like this set. Uh, and I'm going to just, I just give it a quick spray with some water so that everything gets hit. Some people do like individual drops on it, but eh. And then you're going to want two jars of water or, you know, two sources of water so that you can mix one be your dirty jar and the other one kind of be your clean jar. Now, do as I say, not as I do, because I have a tendency to forget and then just start grabbing water from any which way. <laughs> Now, the, the, the thing that you want to do when making these flowers is because we're kind of doing like, like sort of a wet on wet technique, which is if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like where you start off with a very wet brush, whether that's with water or a little bit of color, and then you go back and put a little more color in onto that wet where it'll kind of spread. And so that's the idea behind these flowers and I think we're gonna do like five flowers and that'll be basically the card um, and just a very simple five flowers and um, I might even end up cutting this card down a little bit if I need to so it's not because my other ones were quite they were this size but they're so big I had to use a piece of uh, white cardstock and fold it in half because they're kind of on the bigger side I mean they're not huge they're fine they're just you know but depending on how this goes, I might end up cutting it down a little bit. So I'm going to start off with a color. Let's say you want to use pink. So I've got pinks here. Um, now, also what's helpful is 
you know, I'm not going to be teaching you a lot of like color theory because I'm not that good at it. I kind of fake it till I make it type of thing. So like, for instance, like this, let's say this is a pink, right? And it's quite bright and we want it to be more watercolory and lighter. And I mean, you might want to use it bright, but you know, it's going to be a little bit better if you add some water. So dip your brush in and just kind of bring the water over. And you can like grab yourself like a test piece of paper to use. Um, like here, I've got this. I was kind of testing some colors on so I can use the back of it. And you could test the like opacity of it. And if, you know, you like for the first part of the flower, that's a, still a little bit too much color. So I'm gonna keep adding a little bit of water to it. And I'm also, it's also quite bright and I kind of want to dull it down just a little bit. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more because I'm going to base all of all five flowers off of this, but I might change it a little bit so that they all look maybe a little bit different. So I'm going to add a little bit more water and a little bit more color just so that I have enough to keep adding to. See, I just dipped into that one. I wasn't supposed to. I keep doing that. So there's that pink and then I'm going to make it like a little bit of a more like muted color. So I'm going to add like I'm just going to add a little bit of like, uh, let's add a little brown to it. Like I'm just adding a drop of brown, right? And so that's going to change it to more of a, like a dusty kind of pink. So now, right now it's going to be quite dark, but you can start to see that it's a little muted. My camera might not pick it up. I might add just a little more. Okay. I'm kind of liking that. So now the trick here is to add enough water to really thin it out enough. Or I could take some of it and move move it over here and thin that out and see if that works for our first application. It's still a little dark, so I'm going to add a little more water. A little bit more. Okay, so that should be good. That's a nice light. That's what I want. So now over here, I want to make sure that this is now going to be dark enough so that when I add my touches of color in, which this seems to be, that it's going to be dark enough. You want to make sure your colors are kind of ready so that you're not like fussing with it. And, and in the meantime, that's dry. What you're doing is drying because you really don't want it to dry too much while you're fussing with your colors. So, you know, I have two colors. I have a light color, a darker color. Now I'm, I'm also going to do a third color. I'm going to mix a third color. So what I'm going to do is take some of that pink that I originally had really, really bright pink. I'm gonna put a little bit there. I'm gonna add water to it. I'm gonna add my brown a little bit, start to dull it, but I'm also gonna add a little orange, like this bright orange and see what we get. So now we've got like a, and play with the color. Don't be afraid to mix things up. And if you make a mistake, just take a paper towel and wipe it off. So this is getting to be more of a corally color, um, like an orange, like a dark, not orangey, but, just a darker color, but it's not quite enough contrast. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of this and don't be afraid to do this as well. I'm taking a little bit over here because I like the base of that. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to go with a brighter orange and I'm going to, oh, there we go. See, now we're getting somewhere and I'm going to add a little water Then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it and we're just playing. And if it doesn't work out, guess what? Whatever. All right. So we're now very, very bright orange. I'm going to add a little bit more of this pink color in it. I'm going to actually grab some more of this and grab a little bit of that one. I'm just kind of dulling it down. I don't know what I'm doing. Honestly, I'm just playing. So that's what you have to do. I mean, in order to make the colors you want, you kind of got to play because otherwise, you know, like, I, I hear people always say things about how they want like a specific recipe or they want something that's, you know, very, you know, specific. They want specific instructions on how to make things. I, it, I can't, I can't work like that because I don't know specific instructions on how to do things. So I think I like that. I'm just going to really, really, it's too dark. So I'm going to definitely like mute it out. So that'll be my first color. And that'll be, my, I think that one's my second color. And then that'll be like the third color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that over and then I'm going to take this little bit here and I'm just going to add a lot of water to it so that it's uh, a little bit darker. 
Not too much water. There we go. And I might actually end up adding some yellow as well into the mix, which I'll add a little bit into this. But yeah, I want it to be a little bit more yellowy. And then some more water. Let's see. Yeah, see, that'll be good. So we've got a light, our pale color, which is our first color. We've got a, a, another color, which will be like the secondary, a little darker color. And then we have a third color to drop into the center. And I feel like that's a good combination to get us going for at least the first flower. So this one will get our brush, will get our area wet. And this way you can also be able to see what I'm doing. But what I'm gonna do is make three petals. And they're gonna be basically just like, uh, kind of like a very loose, we're not making perfect lines. I don't know if you can see, um, but kind of like a very like, you know, like out and just kind of make them, you know, whatever, like one there and then one there like that. And then like a three, kind of like, <laughs> kind of like the symbol for like poison <laughs> almost, but in, but prettier. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I just got crap all over my brush. So that's what we're doing. We're kind of going to make, we're just going to do one at a time and we're just going to randomly put it somewhere. So we're just going to kind of, and you want a lot of water on there. So you want it to be a slightly puddled, but you want it to be like, you know, I'm just going to kind of do this, right? So that's going to be the first petal. So we're going to work, we're going to work like, you know, petal by petal, I think is the best way. Well, now maybe we'll do all three, but we're just going to do them fairly quickly. And they don't have to all be the same size or whatever. Just make them touch in the very middle. But we're putting a lot of a lot of color in there, a lot of the water. Not like so much where it's crazy, but we want it to stay kind of wet. And then just fill it in with the light pink, right? So now we've got our color. Um, we got our color. Now we're going to take our second color, which is this one over here, and we're going to start very lightly touching that in to the bottom of the petals, not as much in the middle, but more in the bottom of the petals while it's wet so that it has a chance to like, and you can like pop, you know, just dot it in a little bit and this will give it a little, you know, make the color kind of flow and move around a little bit and it kind of gives extra color. If you want it to be a little darker, you could take from like, I had this darker pool over here. I can even do a second, you know, drop of color and that, that one's a little darker and you're just kind of, it'll automatically kind of almost ombre itself as it goes. And you know, just, and you can always go back and add a darker color if you're like, oh, I want it to be darker, but we also want it to be kind of, you know, pastel-y kind of almost. Um, and then here's our third color. We're going to drop that right in the middle like that. And it'll kind of flow outward and move around and all that stuff. So we'll let that do a thing for a while. Um, and so that'll be the first like flower that we do. Now I may have made too much space in between these flowers, but that's okay. Because if you wanted to, you can go back in with your, with your, uh, your, your paint and just while it's still wet, I can make these a little bit bigger so that they seem to kind of be closer together as long as it's wet. Like if it's too dry, then it might not, you know, it might be, you know, too late, but I can kind of close them up a little bit more if I need to and, you know, make it work and make them like a bigger, we just got a bigger flower. Like that's more of like the front flower, you know, so that'll work. It'll look pretty in the end, I'm sure, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm gonna mix a little bit more of that pale color. And this time, the next one, I mean, I don't wanna make them like so starkly contrasted that like one, the next one's blue, you know? I'm gonna keep the similar color. I'm gonna keep the paleness kind of to start with, but I'm just gonna take a little bit of that orange and I'm gonna throw it in here. So now we've got like this pale kind of peachy color. And if you need to test it to make sure it's not too, too dark, I might add just a tad of water in here. Um, so that works for me. So now we're going to do the second flower. Uh, we'll do that here and we're going to do it a little smaller. So we're just going to do um, like that. And we'll do a little smaller because we want to fit five on here. And it looks like the way I'm going, it's going to, we'll be lucky to fit, uh, you know, two. 
So that one's going to be a bit smaller. We're just going to make sure it's wet enough so that, you know, so that it will carry some color with it when I go to uh, add the other colors. Just want to make sure it's wet but not soaking. So then I'm going to take the next color, and this time I'm going to add basically the same colors, but it's going to act a little bit differently, you know, on this color than it would on the other color. So I'm just adding this color now and letting it kind of flow a little bit. And now for the center, I'll add this orange again. And now we'll see what happens with that one. And they're supposed to look, you know, you know, organic or just let them do their thing and whatever happens, happens. Um, this time we can now take this same bit here and if we add a little bit maybe of yellow in here and add a little bit more of the pink, add a little water, add a little more of that pink, and it'll just become a different color, um, more pink, there we go, it'll become like a even paler kind of orange color and test it out, make sure it's not really, really dark, uh, a little more water. Okay, so then we got this, this will work for another one, and we'll do this, and we'll do this one kind of close to this one, we're not going to touch them. I'm going to put the petals in here, and again, I'm just going to do them a little bit smaller than the last one, and I'm just going to fill in, I'm basically just making like little triangular shapes, and like I said, they don't, they're not supposed to be like perfect, I mean, have you ever seen a perfect flower? So let them be a little, you know weird and spotty and you know you can make one of the petals broken and you know like that's how it is in real life i mean if you grab some flowers that you you know picked out in the wild they're not going to be all perfect um so there's the first color the nice pale color then i'm going to go back in and this time which i should have mixed this ahead of time i'm going to take a little bit of this orange and mix this in here with some water which is might be too a little, a little too dark. I'll mix it up here. A little bit of orangey. That'll be good. All right. So then we're gonna take some of that. I'm almost. It's almost dry. You want it to be wet when you're dropping color in. So kind of prepare your colors ahead of time. At least three of them. And this time I'm gonna drop. I think a yellow. I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put this darker yellow over here. I'm just gonna do this color in the very center, which won't show up too too much right away. There we go. All right. So there's number three. And if you can't really see, I'll show you. That's what they're looking like right now. And if like, you know, if like if I have a petal over here that's a little too light or something, you want to kind of darken it, you can go back in while the thing is wet and you can add a little more, you know, color. But just don't let it be too, too dry when you do that. You'd have to wet the whole thing and it would kind of get, it might get sloppy. All right, so the next one, um, I'm going to flip it around because I'm going to use some of this color, but I'm going to, put it over here because I kind of like this color. I might do another one that's similar to that because I don't want them all to be completely different. So I'm going to put a little bit of that yellow. I'm going to grab a little of this coral color. And let's see. That's good. So that's kind of a, we'll do one up here. And I mean, I don't know what kind of flower these are. They might not even be a real flower and who cares, right? I mean, and they look like flowers, right? So it's all that matters. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be like, oh, well, you know, I don't know what, you know, how to paint a, a perfect, you know, whatever the hell it is, you know, like, yeah, it doesn't have to be a type of flower that's, you know, out there in real life. It can be a made up flower that you just, you know, that's called a poodle santhanum. I don't know. Like, I don't know what kind of flower that is and if it's real or, you know, like I have no idea if those are real flowers or not. 
All right, I'm gonna grab some of this pink and we're gonna dot that on there. Around the bottom of the petals. And I will take a little bit of this orange and mix it in here to darken that up a tad and throw some of that in the middle. And we'll just let it dry because you can see as it dries, it kind of feathers itself out. Like this one here kind of got a little wonky on me, but um, I'm going to dot that a little bit and go back with some stuff and fix it a little bit. Make sure my brush is very wet when I do that, though, so it doesn't go on too dark. But you got to be careful because you run the risk of, like, majorly messing up if you, if you go back. So that's why it's kind of important to learn how to, like, delete, <laughs> you know, because you don't want to have anything be, like, super dark. But that's fine. I mean... If you have too much water, as long as your brush is, you know, as long as you take your brush and dab it off, you can go in and dab up any excess color. Just do it with the very tip, though, because you'll be surprised how much your brush actually will pick up. And you'll be like, oh, no, I picked up too much. So just dry your just dry your brush off. Have some paper towels handy or a rag. Dry your brush off and you can go in and, and pick up. But that's only if you have like a really, really big standing pool of water. In this case, you want a little bit of water to be flowing and, and stuff, but you'll get used to the amounts as you do it. You'll get used to what's too much and what's not too much as you're going, as you do it more and more. So don't, you know, practice in the beginning, you know, have a sheet like just, it's just paper it, and your watercolors, you're not going to run out of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't feel like, oh, it has to be perfect. You have to practice this, even though it's just playing around you still kind of have to practice. So don't like do your first thing on this perfectly cut piece of watercolor that you're like, I'm for sure going to use this in a card. What I would do is grab a piece of watercolor paper, like a large piece and sit down and just practice and practice like little cluster areas like this, because you might find a cluster area on that larger piece of paper that you can cut out and make into a card. So, but practice because that's the best way to do it. You have to practice because you know, if you think that I didn't do this the first time and be like, oh yeah, look at it. It's great. And I don't even think they're that very good either because like when you watch other people do it, they're way better. So, I mean, it's just practice. That's just all I could say is practice makes perfect. Um, I'm going to do another pink one and a large one at that. So I'm going to use this pink that's over here. See, I'm like kind of using all the similar colors and that's why they all kind of look like they're in the same family, but they're, that's not wet enough. <laughs> I dabbed my hand on there and it was like, ooh. Um, so I'm going to make a lar another slightly large one over here to kind of go with that um, big monstrosity that I made before. The first one I made was like way too large. And I'm, you know, I'm trying not to make my top edge like perfectly straight. I kind of like it when it's a bit wonky because if it's too perfectly straight, I feel like it's not, uh, you know, like, like, I feel like it's not, I don't know. It looks too perfect. So however that, however that translates for you you know do it that do it however it works for you well it's a little bigger that's all that matters but you don't want to fuss with it too much because you want to get to your get to your next you know color sorry my phone is ringing right now I'll put it on the floor so it doesn't vibrate okay so now I'm going to put my next color in, like so. And like, see, I put too much of that color in the middle, so I'm going to dab off my brush and kind of pick it up right here. I want it to be more in the petals, not, not as much in the middle. I kind of was like not paying attention to what I was doing because I want the middle to be kind of a different color. So for the middle in this one, I'm going to put a little bit of that pink in there to darken that up because I want that in the center. I have yellow in the center of all the other ones, so I want a little darker color. I might go back and before that dries completely and put some more um put some more 
yellow in there maybe. And Winnie and Willow are playing, so that's probably what you're hearing out in the living room. If you hear noise, it's just them. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to dry that center a little bit. Be careful drying it with a heat gun. It kind of will spread your color quite a bit. I'm just going to drop um, a little bit of this into the center too. There we go. Just a tiny little drop. I got a bubble. Get there we go. And like what you want for placement is kind of like just random, you know, just random placement. They don't have to be in any specific way, just completely random. So for this, I forgot to tell you, I used a round brush. It's a number 10. It was painting with Jane. She had given me this set of brushes. Um, well, it says six and then it says 10. So I'm not really sure. Um, but it's a round brush and that's the perfect thing I feel like for painting just about every flower is these round brushes. And I like this one too, which was by Craftimo. Um, and it's a, a little bit of a shorter, kind of a stiffer round brush. And I'm going to use that to paint some little stems on my flowers. So once they're dry, I'm going to clean this little area here. And now we're going to go in and we're going to paint some flowers or stems and leaves, which is really easy to, because again, they don't have to be specific stems and leaves that are, you know, real. They can just be whatever. And we're just going to keep it kind of simple. And we're going to just pick where our stems are going to go first. We're going to mix up a color of green that we like. Um, so I'll take like this dark green. And maybe I'll add a little bit of this bright green with it. And then I'll add, start adding some water. Now your, your stem is going to be slightly darker and more opaque than your, than your flowers for the most part, at least for me, they are. Um, so I'm going to test this out again. You should have a test sheet. It's always good. Then you can see, and you don't make mistakes. You can see how you want your, stem to be and that to me um seems pretty good uh, i'm gonna add a touch of black in this just a little tiny tiny bit and i might add just a little more because the black will darken it and you just want to add when it comes to black just add a very little bit at a time because it, it can go yeah that's a little bit darker it might not show it on camera but so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take this and I'm going to work out my stems. Now you can take a pencil if you need to, to kind of work your stems out, but I don't, it's not that big deal to me. And you know, I just take it and I just very, very, very light handed, which is something I'm not. And I'm just going to take it and I'm going to kind of, and I typically don't make my stems perfectly straight. I kind of all kind of curve them like to one way almost. So, and then I've got this one, which I'll do this way. That one's a little thick, but that's all right. They need to be a little thicker anyway. I mean, that thin stem is not holding up no flower. Not that big flower. <laughs> and then like, you know, I do the simple ones first. I'll do that one, which will be like that. And you can just go whichever way you want. And then you work your way up and I just go down here. And now this one, I'm going behind the other petals, which is the best thing to do. I mean, you can go in front, but the problem is it's not gonna completely erase over the petal. So you're gonna see that and it's not gonna look as good in my opinion. So you might as well just go behind it. All right, and then we've got this one, which you're just going to slow and steady. You don't have to do anything. And if it's not perfect, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So there's our petals. Like I can go over this one because it's like very, very at the very edge of it. So it's not, or there's our stems on it. So we got our stems. 
And I'm just using the very tip of the brush because I'm a very heavy handed person and my, my instinct is to go like that. You know, it's very hard for me not to do that. So I've got stems. I'm not going to be like making fancy stems. I'm not, that's not the important part. Your flowers are the important thing. So don't worry if your stems are like, oh, well, they're not like perfect and they don't have highlights and lowlights and shadow. Well, who cares? They're just the stems. Um, we're going to do that type of thing with our um, uh, leaves. So I'm going to go back to that other brush I was using. The paint, uh, Where'd it go? I'm painting with Jane. Oh, here it is. It was this one. I'm going to go back to this one, or I had another one that was a little bit shorter, I thought. No, no, this is it. All right, never mind. And I'm going to make our, I'm going to make our leaves, and I'm going to change the paint ever so slightly um, to a lighter color, and then, well, actually, you know what? I'll put a lighter color over here. I'm going to make a lighter color here, and we'll use the darker color as well. So we're going to do two different colors for the leaves. I'm going to do a bright, brighter green and then a darker green. We're going to do that same thing almost like we did with the flowers where we kind of started out with a lighter color and then tapped in some darker color. That's basically what I'm doing here. Now this might, we, we don't need it to be as light as the flowers, you know, the first color. So that's a good color there. And I'm going to add a little more dark green into this one to make it darker. Um, and so that'll be the, that'll be the dark color, um, into the light color there. I'm actually going to add a little bit of, yeah. So with, you know, a wet, a, 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 a fairly wet brush, I always just like knock off just a little bit. Now I'm going to make flowers. Now you can make, I mean leaves, you can make them any way you want. So you can make your leaves where they're just like this and fill them in just a, like a leaf shape. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated or you can make like, like a long leaf where it kind of like, it kind of like goes like that into the flower and like it curves over kind of. And I'm thinking about doing some of these leaves on this one because it's, it's a pretty easy thing to do. Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to go into that paint. Light color first. Um, it's a pretty easy thing to do. So you're just going to make like a like a curve and then press a little bit and make it a little fatter. And it's like, it's kind of like a, um, like a tulip. I think it's a tulip leaf. And then you could do one on the other side. And this is where turning your page kind of helps. So start off with, you know, one or two of these like that. And then go into, and I'm going to make this a little wider, and maybe this one too, and maybe a little wider. Okay, and then go into the darker color, and I'll tap a little into the top, and it'll go down one side like that, and then just, you know, kind of like that. I'm not really, I'm just kind of faking it because I don't know how to, not very good at shadowing things very well so i'm just kind of faking it and if they look like they're merging too much grab a little bit of yellow i found this works pretty well grab a little bit of yellow like watered out yellow and and drop while it's still wet drop a little bit of that yellow in there and it kind of does some cool things so it's just a matter of like playing so i'm gonna go back in and i'm going to and I need to fix this one here because I don't really like the way it looks. And this one needs more of a like a point on it. There we go. And then we can add more detail in it later. Like we'll add like some actual detail in it later. But like And you know, every one of them doesn't have to have like two leaves. You can just do, you know, one here, one there. They can be standing up straight. It's a little too dry, so I'm going to drag some water in there. And 
And now, and no, by no means am I any kind of expert. There are people that will teach you way easier, better things to do. I, this is just my version of it. This is just what I do. And so, I, like, if you're a watercolor expert, you don't need to, like, correct me. Because I know I'm not doing everything right. And it, I'm just doing what I'm doing. I'm just showing what I'm doing. Whether or not it's the right way to do it is not that's not <laughs> what I'm showing anybody isn't I'm not trying to show anybody the right ways to do anything and I just stuck my hand in my thing I, I'm just trying to show the just the what I've been doing basically and I'm even gonna put one up here and that one's a little dark I'm, I'll show you how to lighten it in a minute So if it's too dark, you take some clean water on your brush and you can just go over it and dab it off, put some more water on your brush and you can literally like go along the harsh lines, put a little clean water on and just rub out like the little harsh lines and you can take like a paper towel even and kind of dab it and you can kind of literally almost erase it. And then you can kind of like pretty much fix anything that you're not happy with on your flat on your leaf or your flower or anything just make sure the water is clean that you're not keep putting the same you know color and the same brush you know on the on there so now i can go in and i could take that lighter color and i can go back in and i can re kind of do my leaf and Nobody would be the wiser that it was, you know, a goof up in any way. So it's just basically, you know, fake it so you make it type of thing and do what you can do. And just play like again just practice a little bit play a little bit with it and see what you end up with and just you know just have fun and relax with it don't don't think of it as you know something that has to be perfect or you know you have to stress out over just you know practice a little bit don't don't put a lot of you know don't put a lot of uh value on it like, in other words, you know, don't think, it, you know, oh, well, this has to be perfect for whatever reason or, you know, because you're wasting something. Like, don't don't put any kind of value on it. Just make it be whatever it is. And if you don't like this style of leave, do the other style of leave. You do have to, like, kind of go behind your, you know, your, your, uh, go behind your flowers a little bit. color and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do like just one here just a random one little one here because it's kind of hanging out popping out of the ground a little bit of yellow tip of it and then do another one I'm going to do little blades coming up. Like that. Like little blades of leaves that are coming up in here and there. And then let's see, we could put a few more. Um, sometimes it's hard to find a place to put it.
you just got to play until you get something you're happy with. I'm just shoving, shoving them in wherever, not even thinking about it too much. You can make little ones. Make little ones, make big ones. Then you can go in if you want to kind of like, you know, make the bottom of it. Um, after you've done some leaves, if you want to like make the bottom of it kind of look more full, you can go in and I'll show you how to make a little like, just like little grassy little doodads at the bottom to kind of fill it in a little more. <laughs> so if you think, okay, I've got enough leaves on there, you know, and you want to like make it look kind of on the grassy side, now you can take like another, you know, take a dark green, not too, too dark, but I'm going to just make sure it's not too dark. No, that's good. Um, make like a darker green and then you can just go in and you can kind of make little leaves sticking up here and make them like big, make them little, make a few like this and just go in and flick them upward. And then if you take a little darker color and you do like a few of them and then take a darker color and just go in as well, you can flick in a couple of these darker kind of leaves around. So go from light to dark, light to dark, and just go right over top of some of the leaves and, you know, and you'll see like some of them in the background. I swear to God, these dogs. Winnie, quiet. It's never quiet around here. It's hard to get anything done. And then we'll go back with the yellow and just some of the taller ones. I'll add a few spots in there at the tips and adding a little yellow. And it just gives it a little, you know, something or other. And then I could take the even skinnier brush whoa, and make even skinnier little grass blades that just fill in. And let's see, I'll do those even darker. And do like. Just a little shorter. And you just go over areas. Because you don't want to obviously not go over your leaves because it would look fake. You know, a real a real grass goes up and through everything. You can go up your flowers a little bit. And there goes that, which is fine. I can make a leaf out of it, but I can also fix it just by taking water, clean water, putting a, like a little puddle on top of it, and then taking your rag or paper towel and blotting it. And if you have to do it more than once, put a little puddle on it, let it sit for just a second, and then blot it. And you can pretty much get it completely off. Sometimes you got to work it in there a little bit. That's because I am a hot mess when it comes to trying to hold my brushes. I want to drop everything all the time. 
So I think that looks pretty good. Um, if you want to add definition to your uh, to your leaves a little bit, you want like some of these leaves to have a little bit of definition, you can go in with a very opaque dark black. So less water, a little bit, or not black, uh, green, so that you want it to be, you know, green. And you can add a little, just if you're really, really light with it, which I'm bad at doing, you can add like a line going up them like part way and kind of, whoops, see that one got messy. That's all right. There we go. It won't be that big of a deal. You can add like, oh, see, I'm too heavy handed. It's very hard for me. My hands just want to automatically press so hard. But if you could be really light and you could do that to some of the ones down here and just add little lines so that it has a little definition. I'm just really bad at being light handed. And I keep dropping things. My arthritis makes it. These brushes are so thin. I wish they made thicker handled brushes because like the thin handle is very hard for my hand to like figure out what to do with. So I wish they made some brushes that were good for people that had arthritis, you know. I'm going to fix this one since I screwed it up so badly. Good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. But anyway, you get you get the drift. And you can make yourself some really cute little flowers and some leaves to go with them. And you can dry it with your heat gun. Um, let's make sure it's dry before you take your tape off. Oh, but actually, I want to show you something else. Now, for the next part, you want to make sure it's very, very dry. And if you like the white background, you can take your tape off and it's done, right? But if you want that blue sky look like I have on these, I'll show you how to do that really quick so you can do a background. All you're gonna do is take a little bit of a, your larger kind of round brush, not super large, because you want it to be able to get into areas. And you're gonna need somewhere to mix yourself some uh, paint that's clean, which I don't have a clean area, so I'm gonna do it right here. I'll do it, well, you're not gonna be able to see it, but yeah, I'll do it right here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Hopefully I won't stick my hand in it. <laughs> and what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix the palest of blue colors. It's going to be really, really pale. Um, so I'm just dropping some water down on here. And I'm going to take a little bit of blue, like the tiniest bit, and mix it in. And it's almost non-visible like because that's what you want. You don't want it to stand out. And you just want to check. And that's how pale you want it. Like, you'll see. Like, it should be very, very pale. Now, I need to mix a little more than that because I don't want to mix it three million times. Because each time it won't it won't be the same. So I'm just taking any old blue that I think will mix a nice pale color, and I'm testing it out and making sure that it's good. To me, that's good. You want a nice wet brush, and you don't want to work it over and over and over again. So you kind of want to start, and you want to just use the tip, and you want to you know you don't want it to puddle too much. But you can go pretty much as long as your flowers and stuff are dry. You can go pretty much right up to the you know up to the um, the right up to the flower you're not gonna mess it up you know or anything but you if you leave a little white space around it that's fine too a lot of people do that and they leave like white space around it and if you do accidentally get a little blue on your flower just take your thing and dab it as quick as you can because if you dab it quickly like have a paper towel literally right here and if you dab it very quickly it won't even affect the other paint but if you let it sit for any amount of time it will so you definitely want to you know 
and you don't want to work with a very dry brush so as soon as it starts to dry you want to be able to move a little puddle around basically how to do it and then just like for the bigger areas just use bigger kind of flatter strokes going up so that you get an even amount that's what I do and just work around your flower make sure your brush is wet and then when you get to a big area pull the puddle out and then whoosh it up and then you'll have less of a like a line forming and I go right up the tape pretty much and once you've done an area don't go back because if you go back you risk having marks in your thing so you know unless you can put your tip of the, the brush in there and just fill in a little little areas but don't go back to like a big area see again I need more water and more paint already because once you go into an area um, you know you don't want to go back You just want to make sure your brush is wet not sloppy just wet you know you don't want to be dry brushing it on but you don't want it to be so wet that it's affecting the other things on the on the page you want to make sure you get up against that tape so it makes a nice crisp line as well so go right up along that tape um, and I'll, on every side And it doesn't take much practice. You just, you know, just as long as your color's pale, you want it to be really pale. You just want it to be a hint of color because you don't want it to take over the the, the painting that you did. You want it to kind of just complement it by being, okay, a little bit of blue sky. You don't have to worry about putting clouds in the sky and all that. Like, that's not what, you know, you can if you really want to, obviously. But, I mean, I think this is... Um, and you don't even have to put all this grass or anything. You can just put stems and be done. You don't have to put your leaves. You can make your leaves whether you want to or not. Like just practice with it and play. Make your leaves different shapes. See what shapes work for you. Like I'm not thrilled with my leaves, but you know, it's okay. You can make like regular standard looking leaves. You can make, you know, little tiny little leaves. You know, you don't have to do anything that you don't, that you, you know, it's up to you. Depends on what you think looks good with the flowers that you've made. And I'm even throwing some, you know, in between the little grass blades here. That I'm not worried too much about because, you know, I go right over top of it. As long as I don't have a lot of paint on there. Just to fill in any white areas. And again, just make sure you got it all the way around your edges. And yeah, that's it. See, very easy peasy. Easy peasy. Little thingamabobber. Now you want to make sure your paint is dry before you pull the tape off. And I found that if you heat the tape with your heat gun and then peel it off, you'll have less chance of it ripping your paper, even though the, the purple tape typically doesn't. Um, but still, better safe than sorry. But if you heat it a little bit as you peel it up, it'll less likely stick in any way. So I just give it a little heating and then it'll be good for a minute to... And you won't have any issue and you'll have a nice you know a nice little frame around it which is already framed for you to put on your card which is nice so you know this is a good you know let's say this is the card right so now we've got i mean how pretty is it would that be for a card easy it's they're easy to do again just practice a little bit you could take a little bit of sparkle and put it in the middle which i'll probably do with a little bit of stickles or something just a little touch of sparkle in the middle that's all you need if if at all i mean it's so easy um i'm going to do another video and in the next part i'm going to show you how to do these simple little roses that are like kind of like abstract roses but they're really easy to do so that's another flower that you'll be able to do so stay tuned for that i'll do that hopefully in the next day or two you'll see that go up as well um but thank you for watching if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not subscribed yet 
Um, and I do all kinds of videos, mixed media, watercolor, cards, tags, uh, just everything. I mean, I have everything on my channel. So if you like a variety and you like to look at different things, then, you know, definitely subscribe to my channel. Check out the links in the description. I have a Patreon. You can go there and support my channel, which will also, you know, you can also get classes I do every month. And um, we do swaps. We have a Facebook group that's just for my Patreon folks. And we do swaps in there and challenges and all kinds of stuff. So definitely check out my Patreon. The links are in the description. And I really hope you will give this a try. And if you're not a member of the Poodle Pack Facebook group, definitely become a member of that. That link is also below. And you can share your art. We t any, any kind of art that you do. You could share it with us and I'd love to see what kind of stuff you do. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Have a good day. Poodle Pack out.